episode number two of the Road Home Podcast. We are your hosts, Billy Wilbur. Got my co-host here, Micah Davis. And behind the camera and editor, Jed Tyler. We would like to thank everyone for watching and commenting. This is our first installation of three-part series on Quest for Revival. Our first topic for the series is... The Promise of Revival. We're going to talk about... Um, really the things that God has given us personally and we're going to talk about really what makes us tick as as to what we do and, and why we do what we do and what really what kind of drives us because we are we're looking for something and uh, revival you may not understand that word and there's a lot of us that don't and even we don't we don't understand we we're just talking about that we don't understand that revival the word revival because there's an experience attached to that. Mm -hmm. And those who've experienced it in times past could better tell you about revival. But we are, we're chasing it. Mm -hmm. We're in pursuit of it. We're on a quest. We're on a, a, a journey. Yeah. We're, we're trying to get there. We are ourselves. We haven't seen a true revival like they seen in the old days when you hear of the great revivals right. or or even just for instance the the uh day of pentecost you know that there's been revivals that's been had the same experience as what yes. they had and we go you know to revivals about once a year that mm -hmm. we they call for a revival and yeah fall uh, spring and it and you get there and you have you have good preaching yep. the church service is good it's, yep. it's probably a little bit better than what you have on a normal regular basis a lot more energy but it's not life changing life altering it's it's the same thing every year right. you know something it's not to the magnitude of what we've seen in history. Mm -hmm. And it becomes more of a routine even that yeah. when you say revival, we're having revival this weekend uh, to give us the dates on the calendar. Oh man. Well, everybody comes in. I mean, they are on fire. They're clapping their hands. They're going to have a good time, but you don't show up that way on your normal Wednesday night service, or you don't show up there on your, your Sunday morning or Sunday night service that way. You're, we, we are in a rut. You, you go to a it, revival, it, 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 then you go back to church, and it's kind of dead. It's like you just came yeah. out of something. Revival versus that's, regular that's church. Revival, but you're still dead. Right. You go to, you're supposed to go to get revived, yet, yep. yet it's just the next week you go to service, and it's like you're dead. Yeah. It didn't change your life. Yeah, so something tells me we don't know what revival is at all. Right. What, what does revival even mean? Let's like get the, into it. Let's, let's talk about it. Yeah. What, is, what does revival mean? Like the definition, what is the Well, the definition of revival, according to the Webster's 1828 edition, is a return, a recall, or recovery to life from death or apparent death as like the revival of a, like, of a drowned person. That's their definition. Yeah, they get revived. Yeah. So it's death, it's from death to life. Right. So revival is a resurrection. Mm-hmm. Revival, the fact that revival... We say revival. We're talking about something being dead and coming to life. To life, right. I, I, I'm thinking about so many times that Jesus showed up to somebody who was dead. All through the Bible. All through the Bible. <laughs> oh, well, the, the New, New Testament, Testament especially. Yeah. And just by speaking, they came to life. Lazarus being one, yep. when he came to the, the tomb, and they said, he's been in the ground four days, but now he stinketh. And everybody's out there having a, a wonderful funeral. And Jesus came and ruined it. <laughs> they're there experiencing the one that, you know, all, I mean, it's the biggest funeral in. in Have you noticed wow, that sometimes uh, funerals is the only time you can get some people to show up to church? That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's There's very few times in, in funerals, one of them, you get people to show up to church. Yeah, it's because, you know. It, we can we can somehow. Well, I don't want to get in that. That's, that's <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> I don't get in that. All right. Revival. Go on, carry on. Revival is from death to life. Right. And we're we have to <laughs> we <laughs> we have to we have to have that in mind. If we are Christians, our whole faith, our whole belief system, our whole belief system, the whole lifestyle we live is based upon somebody who conquered death, hell, and the grave itself. Yeah. 
the ultimate revival is when Jesus went to the heart of the earth and took captivity captive and gave gifts unto men, bringing back a resurrection justification for us. Mm -hmm. That 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 just that is what we're all about. And so, the more I, I learn about the Lord, and we are constantly learning every day. We ain't learned nothing compared to what is in store. Right. <clears throat> but the more I learn, the more I'm finding out that God, He's not He's not after establishment. Mm -mm. He's looking for the misfits. He's looking for the dead people. Yeah, the ones that need reviving. He's looking for us. Right. <clears throat> those of us who sometimes feel like our prayer life's not what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Those of us that feels like we don't have the passion for God like we need to have. He's after you. Mm -hmm. He's after us. He's after those who feel dead. And you know, he's given us a promise of that. And we sometimes talk about you know the big revival but there's there is a place of personal revival you can come to mm -hmm. and you say and we've had times of that in our own lives but in these last days and we are living in the last days mm -hmm. we're coming into a season where god's promise of revival is going to come into a view you see how i did that mm -hmm, i saw it yeah we're gonna we're I heard gonna, it <laughs> heard that we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna see god's in the the bottom line revival is going to come to pass. And I'm looking forward to that. And I've heard it preached my whole life. And I don't believe it's been preached in vain. And I don't believe it's been promised to us. In fact, God has promised us so many things in his word alone that tells us that there's something big coming. And we have seen little trickles of it down through time. A few of those have been, you know, recorded and we've paid attention to them one being yes the day of pentecost mm -hmm. that's great but even down through time we talk about the azusa uh, street revival yeah that's one everybody talks about mm -hmm. you talk about um there's oh, a the brownsville the brand big brownsville revival happening in the 90s yep. um all down through history i mean i could go through even there was a, a revival during the middle of the civil war that happened down south that was absolutely Wonderful. 1970, actually in Asbury, uh, Kentucky, there was a huge revival that happened there at the college where they went into a chapel service, Billy, and didn't come out because the power of God fell so great and conviction fell on everybody there. And they just stayed and stayed. And it spread all over the country. But one revival that I have studied out a little bit and has inspired me, and as a young person, as, as young people listening, this should make us want more of God. Mm. When, I, when I've, I found this guy, you know, from just trying to look back through history and study, it, it really pulled on me personally because this man, Evan Roberts, was a great man of God. And in his day, he experienced one of the greatest moves of God in history in Wales called the Welsh Revival. And some of you may not have heard of the Welsh Revival. And it was, it's, it is a crazy story. It's just a crazy story. In 1904, a young man named Evan Roberts went to a prayer meeting. And at that prayer meeting, he got down and prayed. And God gave him a vision. This was, he was 26 years when old. When he was 26 years old. <clears throat> God gave him a vision that he saw whales lifted up into the heavens. Hmm. And he turned to his friend that was next to him that later became his brother-in-law. Thank God for brother-in-laws. He asked him, he said, do you believe that God will give me 100,000 souls for whales? And they agreed in prayer right there in that moment. And within a year. Was it, wait, wait, wait a minute. He, he was talking to his brother-in-law and he asked his brother-in-law this? He asked his brother-in-law this. Well, his friend at the time. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I was just trying to listen. Yeah, yeah, I was getting yeah. this straight. Yeah, sorry. He no, asked, yeah, I'm sure you said yeah. it right. I'm just trying to... <laughs> he asked him, he said, do you believe that God will give me... See, some of us are praying for things and God's given us vision, but you need somebody to agree with. Right. You, you can be off here having a wonderful vision for yourself and your life, but the Bible says write the vision, make it plain upon the tables. You need to make this thing, get this thing out. And that's what we're trying to do with this podcast. We're trying to show you our vision. We're trying to show you. But anyway, Evan Roberts 
turned to his friend, said, do you believe God will give me a hundred thousand souls in Wales? And they agreed in prayer. And within a year, from 1904 to 1905, Wales was turned completely upside down. Uh -huh. And I'm not just talking about their local church. Uh -huh. I'm not just talking about their Bible study group. It was the complete and total nation of Wales was covered with the glory of God. Wow. So when you read in the Word of God that it says that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord would cover the earth as the waters cover the sea, that's not just talking about you come into church and you sing a couple of songs and you have a couple of goosebumps hit you and you think some good thoughts about your dead dog and you cry a little bit. <laughs> That's not revival. Right. <laughs> revival is, Billy, your world being turned upside down for Jesus. That's right. The kingdom of God coming on earth. I, I tell you what, when, <laughs> I want to see it. Yeah, me too. But even even with that little snippet of, you know, there's the, the whales. There's there's something there that's like, we can't touch that. We've not yet, even though your pursuit of it, we don't know what that looks like. It's hard for me to imagine 6,000 people singing a hymn together mm -hmm. spontaneously. Can you imagine that? I don't think a lot of people can. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I mean, unless you go to, you know... Get to get. To, I, I I I can't imagine. Right, Ethiopia maybe. Yeah, I think. Uh, was it Brother Cole back in the the late nineties in the over, the big stadiums yeah, and everything? He went to. I think he went to Ethiopia and there was like several thousand people there. Uh huh. But yet again, we can't comprehend that. No, can't comprehend that. No. So. The title of this is The Promise of Revival. Do you know, in order for you to receive something, you have to believe that you can have it. Hmm. You have to believe that you can get it. If I go to the grocery store and search for a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread, I have to believe that they have available there at that store for me a gallon of milk or a loaf of bread, whatever it may be you're after. When I come to church, when I pray, when I am in search, when I'm reading my Bible, when I study the Word, I have to believe that there's something in this Bible, there's something at church, there's something in my prayer closet that is there available for me mm -hmm. that I can receive from God and that He can touch my life, touch my family, touch my society, touch my country, touch my world, make me a better person, make my life better. Because God's not into making your work, your life worse. Right. Despite he's, what a lot of people will yeah, say. He's not, he's not into that. No. Resurrection, what does that mean? From death to life. Mm -hmm. God is not going to kill you just so he can prove a point. Right. He allowed Lazarus to die in his sickness so that he could be glorified. Right. So God could be glorified in the fact that resurrection is available now, when Martha and Mary were crying at that tomb, they said, Jesus, you could have came and you could have healed him, but now you've waited too long. But Jesus said, don't you know he'll rise again? Yeah. And, and Martha said, oh, I know he's going to rise when the resurrection comes. Talking about a date on a calendar. But Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and Omega, spoke these words and declared himself. He said, Martha, Mary, Jerusalem, I am the resurrection. Yeah. I am the resurrection. I am revival. Mm -hmm. I am not a date on a calendar. Right. I am not your spring or fall revival. I am revival. I am resurrection. So, okay, we got to have a scripture. We got to have a scripture. Joel chapter 2 and verse 20. I'm going to read from the Bible because I like to read out of the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God, inspired, inerrant. I've got no fault with it. If I go to the Word, just like I said, 
There should be things in there. Sorry. This one's not been gone through as much as the others. We got time. Yeah. Not really. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. So, there's something in this word that applies to me that I can get now. Just like when you read it and you believe for your own salvation, when you read that, it inspires faith. Well, there is a passage here in Joel chapter 2, 28, verse 28, Joel chapter 2, verse 28, which declares, and it shall come to pass, that is a promise right there, Mm -hmm. and it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. What does all mean? It means all. All means all. All means all. All means your denomination. Right. All means that denomination. Right. All means this denomination. It's not specific. All means all. all. Right. All means the drug addict. All means the high school. Mm -hmm. All means the White House. Mm -hmm. Uh Uh-oh. All means Congress. All means the Supreme Court. All means all. All means the the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. All means the magistrates. You say all oh, the political offices, all every single means one of them, all. Yep. And the devil is a liar. Yes. He said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and the next thing he says, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. What does that mean? That means they are going to speak by the utterance of the Holy Ghost. They are going to prophesy. They are going to speak into their world. They are going to proclaim the kingdom. They are going to tell people about Jesus. They are going to speak what God is saying. They are going to be inspired by the Spirit of God. God is going to speak through sons and daughters. All means all. Three-year-olds, five-year-olds, 12-year-olds, six-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 15, it goes on, 96-year-olds, 85-year-olds, 25-year-olds, 45 year all means all, your sons and your daughters. Hold on, I'm preaching too much. (laughs) They're going to prophesy. Yep. Your old men shall dream dreams. Hmm. I could preach on that for a minute. Your young men shall see visions. What are we doing here? I have a promise of revival. You have a promise of revival. Your church has a promise of revival. Our church has a promise of revival. This nation has a promise of revival. The entire world has a promise of revival because he said, I will pour it out. Mm -hmm. There's a promise coming down that dusty road. It's happening. Yeah. We are in the last days, and God is going to do it. He's going to do it. I know. I can already hear it. Acts chapter 2 is already fulfilled. Yes, but he said all. In Acts chapter 2, he poured out his spirit, and he said, this is that, which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But here's what happened, Billy. He said, this promise is unto you and unto your children and all that are far off. All. All, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So he, God looked down through the corridors of time and looked upon our time. He looked at the year 2022 and he said, I have a people that's in that all mm-hmm. that are far off and I'm calling. And if I'm still resurrection and if I'm still revival, they can seek me, they can find me and they can have that same experience that they had mm-hmm. in the book of Acts. That's the Bible, and that's the way I read it. Praise the Lord. Yes. So promise, right? He's given us a promise, a promise of revival in these last days. What does the word promise mean, Billy? When we sometimes find ourselves promising people things, we may not make good on those things because we're human. Are you ready? Yeah. All right, promise, uh, this is in the Webster's 1828 again. It says, in a general sense, a declaration, 
written or verbal, made by one person to another, which binds the person who makes it, either in honor, conscience, or law, to do a forbear a certain act specified. Listen, there's a specified act here. A specified act in Joel chapter 2. I will pour out my spirit. That's the act Mm -hmm. specified. Mm -hmm. One person who is that God Almighty. He made itself a promise to his people, a covenant, if you will. A promise. A promise that said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. Now, like I was saying, we are human. When we promise somebody something, if something arises, we can't make good on that promise. Mm hmm. But I read in the word of God. If you read 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, he says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. There's a promise. Mm -hmm. You have a promise. Listen, it's not too late. God will move. It's not too late. We have a promise of revival. This, listen, the hour is not so late that God's not going to move and change this world. There is a people God is calling a remnant of people, out of a people for his own namesake to say, I am going to anoint you. I am going to call you. I'm going to use you. If I used Evan Roberts in the Welsh revival, I'll use you. If I use William Seymour at Azusa Street, I'll use you. He's not looking for perfection. He's looking for a people who are dead. Come on. Mm -hmm. He's looking for a people who are dead, who need reviving, that are just willing to say, would you please come by my house? Mm -hmm. Would you please just, I'm going to humble myself. I'm going to turn from my sin. Would you just please come by my tomb and roll my stone away? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's 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 run over here to the book of Acts right quick. I, I got to read this scripture, Acts chapter three. While you're going there, Micah, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit about that Evan Rob, Roberts. It says uh, when he he was deeply devoted to the Word and he never left home without carrying his Bible with him. When he grew up, he started working in the mines, and at every spare moment available, he would be found seated on a piece of coal, observed uh, absorbed in the Word of God. Wow. So it. it, it he, you know, okay, I'll let you go on. I just want to say something real quick. Go okay. ahead. I, you go ahead. So, so a lot of times, like in myself, I say, you know, I work, mm-hmm. uh, you work. Yep. Where, where are we going to ever find this, the time to, to do the things that God needs us to do right. in, in order to see a revival? Mm-hmm. And as you can see, this man, he worked in the, he, he worked, he worked right. in the mines, but it says that every spare moment available, he was found well, well, sometimes us, every spare moment that we get, we might be uh, looking at something or looking up something, you mm-hmm. know, on our phones or, or just listening to the radio, something, you know, whatever your thing is doing, yes. but he was absorbed in the word of God right. and, and God, you know, God used him. But I, I just thought that was very interesting is that a lot of times we say, I, I, I can't find the time to, to be able to read our, my, my word, right. but I read the word of right. God. Whenever we, we say, oh, we don't have time, but yet we've got all kinds of time to kill with something else. Right. That's right. If my people, yep. If we would just turn from these things, yeah. we can see revival. Mm-hmm. We're on a quest. Yeah. We're on a quest. Now, don't take that as you guys shut this podcast off and yeah, not listen to yeah. it. This just is, listen to the rest of this. Listen, then, then listen go to the pray. rest of it, yeah. Listen to the rest of it. Then go read your Bible. Then go read your Bible. Then go pray, okay? That's right. All right. Acts chapter 3 and verse 18. No, not 18. Sorry. Where am I at? 19. Acts 3 and 19. This tells us how to receive this. He says, repent. Hold it. What does that mean? (laughs) Repent. That's an old word. (laughs) Repent. let, Let that sink in for a second. Every time God starts out a command, he always starts it with repentance. Repent. Do you want the dictionary? Yeah, give me that thing. To feel pain, sorrow, or regret for something done or spoken. Mm. 
Do you feel bad for your sin or are you loving your sin? That's right. I'm not talking about you just, oh, Lord, have mercy. I love sinning. But do you really enjoy being complacent, not having a drive for God? Do you really enjoy this? That's, that's the question you should ask yourself. He said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. I want my sins blotted out. You want your sins blotted out? I do. That sounds like a good idea. Yeah. But he said you got to repent to do that and be converted. That your sins be blotted out. When? When the times of refreshing. Oh, Lord Jesus. When the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. That's what we're talking about. Revival. Yeah, to be re refreshed, revived. Mm. Just to, just to kind of hit what refreshing looks like. Refreshing is what happened in Wales in 1904 when they shut the sports industry down in that country because people were out in the fields praying and crying out. Wouldn't that be God. something? I want to see that Super Bowl shut down, that mess. Yeah. You say, oh, I ain't saying it's wrong to love play sports and all that. That's great. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about people who were so wrapped up and distracted by God coming and visiting them that they were more interested in what was going on in insignificant places mm -hmm. than they were in the arenas of that land. Mm -hmm. That they would, listen, they shut the prostitution houses down. The bars were empty. We've not seen revival. No, no. They shut those places down. And those ladies who used to be immoral and ungodly became some of the greatest Bible study leaders in their, in their hometown. Mm. The cops shut down their whole business. There was no need for crime. There was no crime. They didn't have to throw nobody in jail. Yeah, there was Saturday no need night. for policing. There's no need for policing. That's revival. Yeah. And that's the quest we're on. We're after that. And I want you to join us with us. Stay with us for the next two podcasts. We're going to have something great coming up here. And we're excited about this. We believe God is doing something great. We really do. We believe, we, we're, we're excited about this. Yeah. We're on a quest. We really are. All right. Well, I always like to thank you for tuning in. You can find us on YouTube. Search CGA Church. And you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, Amazon Music, or Audible. Please like and subscribe and share on all platforms. And until next time. We'll see you all a little further down the road. Yep. Yeah.